controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. Oh, daddy. <laughs> yeah. Do we do we used to have a sound that says story time or No. No, never mind. I was just like, well, I <laughs> I have a story time about cults. I was trying to make a noise because we always start with a noise and I was like What's a, a cult a daddy? noise? Oh, oh or like glug daddy, glug like... glug drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> Uh, Do we just jump right into the fact that you were in a cult? Well, okay, let's talk about our rela- <laughs> I wasn't actually in a full cult. I okay, was just in, I'm, I'm not going to like, I don't want to go into details about this, but I just was will. like in a group of coming up in the YouTube world that like retrospectively was like, was that a cult? Okay, so I think it was a cult because I would go over and be like, hey Mitch, tap, 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 you're but in a cult. I was kind of on the outside of it. Like you I don't were, feel that were, I was were. like in a cult. No, you weren't. But okay, let me read definitions of cults okay. because I do think that, okay. <laughs> it qualifies. <laughs> a system of religious veneration and devotion directed toward a particular figure or object. Okay, isn't that religion? Yeah, so that's a little, you know, whoop, whoop. well, okay. It's, Oops. It's very hard to define cults when you read academic literature. They always say that because exactly There's like, different, yeah, like they cross <laughs> over with many other things like, like religion, religion yeah. which is just something that like we all like not maybe us personally, but like yeah. we kind of accept it's not a cult. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of the studies talk about new religious, oh, frick. It's called NRMs, new religious. Oh, I have to, when we get to that study, okay. I'll read about it. But it's like new, oh, new religious movements okay. as a get called, academic cults. term for a cult because there is always this sort of spirituality thing mm. mixed in. Anyways, a relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister. Okay. Or a misplaced or excessive admiration for a particular person or thing. <laughs> and I think that was like, uh, Okay, well, I first want to touch on it because it is kind of like, the, by that definition, then religions are just cults that are so pervasive that we can't call them cults anymore. It's That is a big part of why the abstracts in these papers are like, this is so hard to and study. I, yeah, and I have heard some, like, con- not controversy, what's the word, like, like arguing over like a lot of small religious movements do often get called out, but then they're just like, well, yeah. why, why should we like, yeah. you know, in my mind, I could imagine that there's a, some innocuous kind religions that are new out there. That yeah, they're like, we're just trying to fit like, the world. It's like a cult. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Well, if that's I think true. of our friends that go to CrossFit. I'm like, it's a call. <laughs> like they actually like, but some pu- people would call that. Like, yeah. Not just that. I'm but joking. Some people but maybe would not. use those kinds of things that where people like are obsessed with. As yeah. Cults. And it's like, maybe not a person, but it's the object and it's the box that they jump on and get a big ass. <laughs> but there is Talk about your call because it was it was so no, juicy. I, just, I came up in the YouTube scene. Isn't that like so sad to say out loud? It's like yeah. actually true. But like whenever I hear yeah. musicians talking about the scene they came up in, and I'm always like, I always romanticize it. And maybe they don't. Maybe they know how cringy it is deep down. But like, no, but I literally no, yours like, was cringy. Up, oh, stop. <laughs> just because the internet. It was a be, cult, man. <laughs> it was no. What it what it was from the outside was a cult. You know, stop it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like. There was a bunch of Canadian YouTube creators who I think there were not that many in the country, let alone where we were living, that were trying to kind of like come together. It honestly was an early days like... Um, oh, Hype, Hype House. House. Yeah, or what was the original Oh my called? God. Hype House is also a cult. Yeah, so um, if those are cults, then what I was in was a cult. Yeah. But if they're not, <laughs> then I wasn't. No, I think the Hype House is a cult. I think the YouTube house that you were in was also a cult. So the the what the only By thing definition. that made ours a cult was that there was some weird reverence for like the, the leader, guy, the leader that was the most popular one, which I'm and sure there was happens. misplaced adoration towards him because yeah, so he we was don't need to weird. talk about like that, but I just think <laughs> it, it is interesting because at the time. I think I was a little older than most of the people that were part of it. So I could kind of see it. And I remember. And I would come over and be like, Mitch, this well, is insane. What really and other people was, too. wait, I eventually left and we started ASAP Science. And then I was like, let's get out of here. Yeah. Um, but what was said to me one time in private by this person who was, you know, the leader, he took me in a room oh and God, he, right. said, <laughs> he said, he uh, said, I respect you because I can't control you. Like I can. Control oh people. my God. That makes my skin crawl. Yeah. And I was like, what? And there was obviously just cause <laughs> I was like, I, I was older and I was confident and I was like, I don't need this. It was exciting to like meet these people and be editing. And I was there helping make music and stuff and edit. And I was just like, you know, but, but at the end of the day, it wasn't like I wasn't living for it. Yeah. 
I, was, um, I wasn't living for it. I wasn't living for you, and, daddy. But it was just so disturbing to have that moment. Of no, that, like, when you told me that was when not, it was sort of like, we and, need to get and out. And they were <laughs> saying it to me as though I would respect that they said yeah, it to me. Yeah, no, it was like, near hang out. Anyway. So, so I do. F- our whole existence is because of a cult. Like our whole business existence. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, <laughs> whatever. I'm like, being YouTuber sucks. And I'm like, no, whatever. Oh my God, we're going to get canceled. I'm like, YouTuber is hard. What's the new thing that everyone's mad about? <laughs> oh, yeah. And the like influencer it. was like, it's hard. It's like, it's not hard. It's the easiest <laughs> job in the world, but it's like not that like cool. Um, <laughs> uh, so, okay. A misplaced or accept. A cult is a misplaced or excessive admiration for a particular person or thing. I do think the hype house is a cult because isn't there like that guy and now he's started a new one. There's like the mm. four of them and he's like, he's like, looks like he's 48, but he's actually like 23 and whatever that guy's name is. You were in a cult and I'm not going to say it out loud in this podcast. Stop it. <laughs> so I, we can talk about it later, but, um, or we can talk about it in the podcast. So like, I don't care. We're talking about cults. So that guy in the hype house um, can we look up his name? Who was that guy? I could not tell you. Wasn't there? What was the Jake Paul hype house? Like there was an oh. earlier one, right? Like there was an early version that was the original, and then there was also like O two L or something like those, like the one that Shawn Mendes was in. Wow, I'm literally reading about the hype house. Don't recognize any of these names. Like, it's so <laughs> funny how I'm trying to think of someone who's probably like the seventeenth person to start a hype house. <laughs> Either way, you were in a hype house mm-hmm. of the GTA. Yeah. And it was like the early 2000s. And I do think it, it wasn't was not the early, wait, what was it? the early 2010s. <laughs> it was 2012. Yeah. The, the early 2012. <laughs> like, and I do think it's like what made it so culty was the fact that you all like lived together and it was like, you weren't getting paid. And there was like, hmm. sometimes like food held over you. And it was like, yes. there were weird parts about it, but now I'm we like were that. literally paid in accommodation. Paid in accommodation. The accommodation was bad. The food was like white bread and butter. Sometimes they'd be like, this is n- this is a cult. Like, <laughs> we would be out. like, we're starving. And I remember I'd be once like, we like, okay, I can take you guys out and yeah. we'll go get lunch. Once we went out and got lunch and the people were like, oh my God, this food tastes so good. I'm like, it's literally a buffet. Like, what have you been eating? <laughs> but but I, my point is that I think it was such a cult. And now I'm like, we just accept those cults and their hype houses. And it's like, yeah. I haven't really thought about how creepy because, those because they, are. Because those are versions that are internally cults. So it's like, I guess what cults are, but I guess is a stupid way to define it. But it's like, maybe young kids do worship the hype house or whatever, but not in that way. It's more like the dynamic of the thing I was in was a group of like 15 people. Yeah. And within that, it was cultish. But from the outside in, people weren't seeing it that way. You know, we were like posting content online and it seemed... Yeah, that that's thing. true. But, but the people around you, close to you, were like, this is a cult. And there was a lot of discussion And inside, maybe yeah. people around the people who are in the hype house who are like, Might my son's also, in a cult. Yeah. Uh, but then it's like, is Hollywood a cult? Is like working for an agency and, and honestly, like that whole Bad world. And honestly, if Rosalia started a cult, like I join <laughs> Like it's kind of like I have cultish uh, obsessions with pop stars. Like when it's like uh, what a, excessive misplaced admiration for a particular person. I g- go through my life. Celine Dion, Bjork, <laughs> Lady Gaga. Like at a different time, there is a person who truly. Has like taken the, the role that you'd be obsessed with. Yeah. Over. Once I told my friend Ali Flita she's never let it down. I was like, I would kill you to meet me, <laughs> Lady Gaga for two <laughs> minutes. <laughs> 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 literally oh on my birthday this year as a joke like, I was like I would kill you for a TikTok from Bill <laughs> Bad Bunny but I was like you know at the time like Alejandro had just come out and I was like serious right. I wasn't actually gonna kill no, him we were drinking but, but like, it was like that was the yeah. level you were willing to joke about it to, yeah that they were that significant to you and there are people like that like even with like BTS and these new fandoms and well I actually want to bring up like my study then okay. because it is about celebrity in particular so it's not about cults necessarily but mine's about celebrity worship and its relation to cognitive abilities. Oh no, it doesn't mean I'm dumb. It has to, because so I'm not smart. Basically, like the this group of people, I think it was like a few thousand, um, were given something called the celebrity attitude scale, where they had to like, you know, agree or disagree with a handful of oh statements. I'm gonna read a couple of examples. So it was like, I often feel compelled to learn the personal habits of my favorite celebrity. Okay, Mitch, <laughs> I spent Saturday three hours reading 
Rosalia's <laughs> Wikipedia page and then clicking every single link. I know that where she bought her house. She bought her house in a specific suburb of Barcelona with Raul Alejandro, her boyfriend, who I also okay. really like. The, it you're... was crazy. I know about the producers. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Yes. Okay, next answer, one. Yes. Next one we know the answer to. I am obsessed by details of my favorite celebrity's life. Now, I really wish, like, if this was another week and I hadn't just seen that mind blowing concert, I would be like, nah, I'm not so much anymore. Like, it's right. a new one. It is a new one, but, but you're in it. I'm in. Okay, last most important one in my mind. If I were lucky enough to meet my favorite celebrity and he or she asked me to do something illegal as a favor, I would probably do 1, it. 1,000%. <laughs> oh my God. What? Are you kidding? <laughs> okay. So you obviously are on the side of celebrity worship. Like, I mean, obviously study. like I wouldn't kill someone, but if they were like, steal me a lipstick, like, yeah. Or like <laughs> illegal is such a vague term. True. It like, I would a big range yeah. of things. But if they were like, do you want to break into this store and steal a bunch of purses? I'd be like, that's so fun. Rosalia, let's go. Because then it would like, because I'm stealing purses from Louis Vuitton and they deserve it. Yeah, like, but what if it wasn't Louis Vuitton? What so if like, it was a mom and pop shop? Okay, like, no, I, I, I actually think I would be like, Rosalia, no. But like, I, I'm just saying there's a lot of illegal things I want to do, I would do right now. <laughs> like, I, there's illegal things that should be legal. Yeah, that's fair. That's different. That's different, though. Okay. Like, what if she asked you to do something that you wouldn't normally do no, without like her asking something you? like that would morally make me feel bad. I wouldn't. Okay, but like I would. But you had a moment. Thousand percent rob Louis Vuitton with <laughs> Rosalie if that's an option. Okay, so they asked those questions, then they took cognitive tests, oh, no. uh, like vocabulary tests and digit symbol substitution tests, which is apparently like a standard for. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't either. Um, the result. There was a tendency for those who had strong admiration for celebrities to have lower cognitive abilities. No. <laughs> However, to be fair, the association wasn't super strong, but it was statistically significant. Um, like it was not by chance because there have been other studies yeah. that have found this, but most of them well, could have been explained think by Think of chance. like all the brilliant physicists we've got to meet from our job. They don't give a flying fuck about what's going on in celebrity <laughs> culture. Like they don't. They don't even know what. But yeah, they also like, don't know how to speak English. So like whatever. Like they also sometimes. Because they speak like, science. No, I know. But speak sometimes physics. I'm like, you're so f in the weeds on this. Right. Like you're not it's even like a smart. little far like, in the other direction. If the cognitive test was like what's the date they'd be like i don't know you yeah. know what i mean like i'm like there's hopefully some things it's they get wrong interesting some other thing that came up not from this study but it reminds me of you it says previous research has found that celebrity worship is also associated with addictive and problematic social media use fuck Drag which makes sense hell. though because that's where you would be finding stuff watching things about but i've them. always been obsessed like with celebrities like even before i was gay like because it's always seems like a but gay you thing. obviously are so smart it's interesting because i don't know really i don't think i'm that you, smart you are though like you're i didn't you are come on i just read a bunch of shit like yeah, I, I just read the new yorker every freaking day that's me putting in books. effort you listen to podcasts every single day you're that's putting about, like, in effort i'm talking about like when i think like about naturally. sitting in a classroom when we were in university, i work hard you know i worked so much harder than you and no divorce. i'm not saying i'm smarter than you <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but like me dragging me is dragging you. Um, no, in university it was like maybe I'm smarter than Edge. Um, but I you do are. think that there, but there, there were also a lot of people smarter than me in university who would study even less than I would. Do. And do you remember Iris? Yeah, stoned out of her goddamn mind all the time. <laughs> Na like Iris, if you're listening, I'll never forget you. That was incredible. She yeah, was so smart. So smart. Yeah. Like she was truly a pothead. I don't think she cared about celebrities. Well, I guess but she just the word knew. smart is also interesting yeah, to me because fair. it is like. Is it is being smart somehow just knowing things without like in that sense? I was always in awe because I felt like you studied less than me and would often do better. Well, okay, but I think from smartness like uh, exams often. I'm just defending my own intelligence. <laughs> like you know, sometimes people get nervous and stressed, and like yeah, there's a lot fair. of elements of intelligence that cannot be captured in an exam setting. But okay, from when we were we, I was a teacher. Intelligence that they taught us to see in kids was being able to take what you've learned and apply it in different settings. So it's like, why I don't think I'm that smart is because I'm really good at like, I'm very interested in things. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I love to learn. It's like my greatest passion, including learning where <laughs> Rosalia has bought a house, but like <laughs> also literally learning about like how, 
like nature and how like plants work. And I just am obsessed with the way that the world works. So obviously biology, I did so well. You're just like basically describing that you're smart. You're like, no, so I'm not that smart, but no, I just no, like sorry. obsessed. I put so the world. much Understand. work. I put so much work into knowing those things. And but I'm that's saying what being smart is I'm saying people like, don't just like magically know things. No, but like I learned the thing in the context of what it is and I understand it and I get it. And then the second someone's like, okay, now take that, what you've learned and apply it to this new situation. I'm like, well, I haven't learned that. So I can't. Mm. And what I've noticed as a teacher was so fascinating with my like students who I remember being so intelligent is they would, without any effort, be able to take what they've learned mm. and, like and apply it, it creatively and be like, I don't know this. And it'd be like, that's right. <laughs> and they can do it with math. They can do it with English. Like there are just people out there who like naturally can make yeah. connections between things, which to me, I've always thought was intelligence. And at one point was told that when I was a teacher. They no, that's like, definitely like, a form of intelligence. If for you sure. think about like an exam, there'll be the first question, which I'll always do well on, which is just the question and the answer. There'll be the second, third, and then in science, at least the fourth question will be like, okay, you know all that. We get that. Right. Let's but throw now something let's throw different. something new yeah. in. And I would always just be like, flip my table. And like, I don't know. <laughs> and I think that truly is why I don't think I'm that smart. But I do get that like, um, questions one, two, and three. Like I'm so obsessed with learning that like things came naturally to me because I was, I was genuinely enjoying myself, like learning right. science. Like I think sometimes when you looked at me being like, he's so smart. It's cause I actually was like, well, you also did tell me once that you have like a photographic memory and you'd be like, uh, you see when you sit in exams, you would just close your eyes and you could see the page. Okay. That's I, cheating. That's, that's a part of like the fact that I like also love painting and visual art and I love visuals. Yeah. And I do remember sometimes like a lot of biology was drawing diagrams and I could you shut could my just eyes like, and like see, see the, it. Yeah. And, and, and obviously it has to do with understanding, but like, it felt like cheating. I was like, can anyone else do this? <laughs> yeah, like, that is cheating. Okay, so back um, to cults. Well, okay, so the last thing I'll say, their evaluation of this association, or sorry, like their theory or hypothesis was that it may be that individuals with higher levels of cognitive skills are more likely to understand the marketing strategies behind famous people and thus less vulnerable to celebrity worship. Yeah, that's interesting. But that's just like their like take. Like obviously that wasn't like what they found. Well, I obviously have like addictive boxes. problematic like phone use and I am obsessed with celebrities. <laughs> to me, it's because <laughs> your brain's going so fast. You just like always need something to stimulate it because you do so many other amazing cool things that I just feel like it's but not, like, you're not you're, like, I can picture this in other people that are not like, I don't need to like pump you up and hype you up. Like I know, you know, you're smart, but it's just like, you are smart. <laughs> like there's other people who probably aren't. That. But like celebrities have always been such a strong interest of mine and it's so shitty and fleeting. It doesn't have to, uh, but like it is. Yeah. Okay. I remember once we had an LA like manager and we were like driving and I don't even know. Like she said something and I was like, yeah, like Demi Lovato or something like answer. She was like, she looked at me. She's like, wow, good job. <laughs> And it was like one of those moments I'm like, yeah, in LA, I get like A plus for knowing Demi Lovato. I don't even know. It was something so where I was like, I don't want to be told good job for that. But it was sort of like, there's a part of our society where like being culturally aware of things is a benefit because yeah. you're like at a party and it's like, you can like, really to be both connect to people, people and, be yeah. like, oh my have God, something to talk about the new single. And it's yeah. like, you get constantly like reaffirmed connect with them. That's been what I've thought. Like, obviously from a young age, I must have known something and someone had congratulated me and I've like right. my brain has meant this is good because when beautiful. you zoom out it's not good it feels like a lot of and this is just like anecdotal personal experience but so many gay guys are obsessed with pop culture yes I know um, I know but I will say You're opposites not. attract because I truly you don't you don't uh, care I find it a job like I don't I it's not that I don't care and there, and there definitely are like celebrities or certain artists that I do obsess over in my own way but not like to a super crazy no degree. no you you really i'm but because i'm just like i don't track. have the capacity i, I find it so to interesting. me i feel like it's because i'm dumb because i'm actually like i can't fit anymore my little well, brain that's why i think you're smart even though i said earlier you weren't <laughs> um yeah okay you have a lot of ground to make up no here. you're really like you take pay close attention to detail and you're right you like get very like flooded easily because you're thinking deeply about things. And I really don't think people who think deeply are going to give a fuck about celebrities. And I think that's part of my issue with it is like, I'm not thinking deeply when I'm thinking about them because if I did, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like go to sleep. Like there's nothing worth thinking deeply about really. Really. It's like, even like <clears throat> Rosalia, it's like, if you really think about it, her songs are like beautiful 
like songs about like getting eaten out amazingly <laughs> and well, she had cool lights and stuff but it's like at the end of the day that's not well see to me that's the part that's the most interesting actually like i think the art like what yeah, she no, created in her show <laughs> is but then the yeah. obsession with her like i still like love and appreciate and respect her as a, but then it's like i think it's more interesting to get obsessed with a piece of art and yes, be like so fair. curious about the meaning behind it and you're trying to extract as much out of it like that's why i love reading lyrics and like thinking about what mm -hmm. they mean and their interpretation of them and meanings and like themes and songs and i think that's something she was I a really bad example to. for me to remember because <laughs> i'm actually like i feel like there is value yeah but um but not in her life to me like, yeah i don't care that and much. the cult of celebrity for a lot of people are people who are just like in the tabloids just because for yeah. being famous period yeah. yeah and it's just like it's just like i know it's not good okay but anyways. again it's like yeah who cares it's just like let people do what they want to do you know unless they end up in a cult which i'm going to talk about now which is the really interesting research about the people who end up falling into cults because it's totally not what you would think okay so i think that scary <laughs> well in some ways yeah the stereotype is that it's people who are like i mean when you think about the shows that we watch yeah, a lot like of the time easily manipulative people yeah manipulated people shot like, Freya, like laughing right at them. it's like you deserve this almost like you did this to yourself yeah or like yeah. the person from like smallville and nexium i'm always like oh my god that crazy like hollywood girl got in a cult like there's something juicy about being Smallville. like, what? Oh, oh, I didn't know what either of those things you just said were. Oh, Nexium's like the famous cult that is like everyone's obsessed with. Oh, There's so many podcasts okay. about it. And there are celebrities, like sort of like D-list celebrities. I would say D because I'm a scholar of celebrity <laughs> and I can rate them. But a D-list celebrity from Smallville who like Alex Mack, like I remember watching her on TV and she's part of it. Okay. So it's sort of like there's something there that's like, if you like me, like celebrities are like, that's right. interesting because it's managed. Ties into cults. Yeah. And I think for some reason people might be like, she was weak mm -hmm. or something. So there's a stereotype that people are weak or stupid or disenfranchised, but disenfranchised, but that's completely inaccurate. Hmm. So the common characteristics are that you have a higher level of education. Oh, you have a weak spiritual background. That's sort of separate. That's I'll get to that higher financial success, younger age, and you have fewer time constraints. So this is, <laughs> it's not interesting. And I'm like, it's you. So, I mean, you know, it's like, that is me, <laughs> but it's also me. And it's also really interesting. So people who join cults, usually they think, sorry, People who join cults on average have higher educational um, upbringing. Like attainment. Like, yeah, exactly. And it's because that what education <laughs> teaches you is to take in new ideas and actually marinate and not just immediately say no to new information. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who are undereducated, when they get exposed to new information, they just, they're like, that's not what I pre-existed thought. Like no, it's a no, it's a no for me. Okay. And you have to be able to do that in order to join a cult. Also a lot of cults they find involve a lot of reading and work and studying. And they've, they've seen that they, this is their prediction as uh, to why people who like will actually devote time to like, like re to doing studying. Yes, exactly. Mm. And so then the thing, a lot of this had to do with NRMs, which we were saying was like new religious movements, but like they're calling them cults. But again, you can't, what's a cult? Mm -hmm. um, and so also the fact that they were more affluent, like middle, like to higher income people, mm -hmm. the reason they think is because it's like, they're linking wealth with success. They think that these people who are joining cults are more successful because they're people who like strive for more fulfillment in their lives. Yeah. And therefore they become more susceptible because they're constantly looking to seek growth or spirituality growth. Right. Or like the people who are successful are the people they're who are looking for, for more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, uh, not like, to interrupt, but I'm just like, it is kind of ironic because I can relate to this in the sense that, you know, I'm not a religious person. And that does sometimes leave a bit of a hole. Well, that's that it's a, almost like you're fulfilling, but then yes. it's ironic that the definition of a cult kind of fits what a religion is in the first yes. place that it's like, so what, what is going on? So there? the, so the, it says also, if you have a weaker <clears throat> spiritual upbringing, you're more likely to join a cult. And they had this like really dumb analogy. <laughs> Sorry, maybe it was a smart analogy because I'm dumb. <laughs> There's analogy about like a car, like in a parking lot. It's like, if you're in a Chevrolet, this was a really funny study, but whatever. If you're in a Chevrolet, is that even the name of a company? It's a car. A yeah. Chevy. A they Chevy. said Chevy, it's but then I said Chevrolet. Chevy is no. the short for Chevrolet. I, I actually could not tell you if that's a different thing. Because they but. said Chevy, and now I'm like, that means Chevrolet, right? And now I'm freaking out because I'm like, is that French? Oh, by the way, if you guys didn't know we're gay. <laughs> yeah. Is, is Chevrolet a French car? 
No way. I think it's American. I'm gonna. I know because when I picture a Chevy, I picture like down in Ohio State where I got my corn grown. I'm going to my farm in my Chevy. But it's a Chevrolet. Like it sounds like a gorgeous wine from like Port-au-Prince. Oh, it's part of General Motors. It's American Automotive Division of American. Yeah, yeah. But they hate from Detroit. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm like, it's interesting. What's the word Chevrolet? They didn't call it like. Like a Dorito or something. Actually, no, that's not and it is the same as Chevy. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Wow, we're learning. We're getting but so educated. Isn't right Chevrolet now. such a gorgeous French term for like one of the most American things in my head? Yeah, I need to learn what this word means. Like, where is the etiology? Is that or etymology? Yeah, et- I never. Et- 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 oh my god, words! I'm having that weird thing where you like think too much and words are starting to fall. Etymology is bugs. Okay, typing in what does Chevrolet mean? They're gonna be like it means a car. Ugh. I want to know. I think it just means that some gorgeous, classy American at the time thought that they should look to France when naming their vehicle. I'll look into this later. (laughs) I mean, if you're French and you can be like, Chevrolet means car or something, like, (laughs) then let us know. But okay, get back to this. Whoa, okay, sorry. The metaphor. Side note: It's called side note for a reason (laughs) because you're gonna go all over the place. (laughs) The metaphor is like if you are a avid Chevy. You're in your Chevy and you're in the parking lot. And I need you to focus. You're looking to hop in hand again, Mitch. Roebuck? I don't know. Okay. Stop. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. It doesn't matter. (laughs) You're in your Chevy shit. I keep saying it. Chevrolet, if you will. And you are obsessed with Chevrolets. Okay. And you're walking into (laughs) such a stupid (laughs) metaphor. And you're walking into a car dealership and you love your Chevy and you park your Chevy and you're like, and it's and they're like, we're gonna sell you on this Ford. You're gonna be like, "Mm, I love my Chevy. But if you're walking into a uh, car dealership and you have no car before Uh and they start pitching you on a ford you're like okay maybe i'll try a ford like they're saying like interesting if you have a so you're willing to enter into a new space and oh yeah okay like if you have a pre-existing like obsession with the oh my god you know what you know what are cults but android and iphone apple both like people obsess they're cultish and so when you have an Apple iPhone, you're obviously going to get the new Apple yeah. iPhone. But when you're 13 and your mom says, or dad, or anything in between, says you can get a phone, you go, well, which one? Well, in that case, and then you're more susceptible to, the, to like peer pressure. I did that. I was tried to be cool and didn't want to get the Sony Bean or an iPhone. And I went <laughs> and I went downtown to a guy, the shittiest thing ever. It was an MP3 player. And I told my sister there were good reviews. She bought it too. Both stopped working. We, oh, no. we were like, where do we go to fix this? They're like, we don't even know what that is. <laughs> so I tried that once and it's like, okay, I, I was the cult of that. But if you aren't irreligious, mm-hmm. you you're have more like susceptible to cults. Interesting. Because you don't have this. Because your religion that, would ground you in something previously. And also like you'd probably in some ways be in opposition to your religion. Exactly. To join and you're maybe not lurking cults. for them. You, you know what it But that's you. assuming the cult is in the same what do you say? Like I know. Uh, what would you say? Like category? Yeah. So like this, spiritual cult, totally. right? Well, this was that's what versus the study if was we're on. talking about Android and Apple, that's like a technological yeah. cult. This study was on new doesn't have to be movement. But, so okay. it's like that is fair. These are were really rooted in spirituality. The last thing is that if you are younger, you're more susceptible to cults, and it's because they bring in um, child psychology and like teenage psychology, and you really start to try and figure yourself out separate from your parents mm. and so that it's like a really mm. like rife opportunity for people Perfect to be like i am to, yeah i am someone different like this is me in a variety of reasons i just like remember doing that but i didn't join a cult yeah so they're also like that one seems more obvious right the, yeah, the, yeah. the, the fact Makes that you'd be like sense. richer and more successful i think is so interesting it's counterintuitive and yeah. that you'd be more educated it's so mm-hmm. interesting it's counterintuitive and i really thought but it is interesting because I've often, I'm sure we've had this discussion before, I don't know if on the podcast, but how like in modern day there is sort of this lack of like, I don't want to subscribe to like religious philosophy or no, but gathering. I do want to go to church every Sunday. Yeah, there's something yeah. nice about having a community and both your parents are like go to a church, but I don't see them as particularly religious. I think it's like a community. It's like nice to see that. people and like see their families and see them on a weekly basis. So I want to be in a think- really nice cult. Yeah, like, and to be honest, that's how cults pose themselves. Like, it, it's hard to know what. That's why the word cult is just so weird. Yeah. Because honestly, like, when I watched Wild Wild Country, like that Netflix series, yeah, you wanted you. Well, I don't like. Obviously, it gets <laughs> like, like messy, and people like. I kind of forget what happens to be honest, but I was like, I don't know, it sounds good. Yeah. It's like a little bit like my like, camp love was a everyone. Cult. That's what and, you were gonna bring up. Yeah, yeah, my camp was like culty for sure, yeah, for sure. and it was like. 
built some of the most beautiful relationships of my life. And also I was like, it was a call. I think like a call, being a call doesn't have to be bad if it is not harming. I guess that's easy enough to say and harder to like evaluate. Yeah. But like I can imagine like, okay, with this Wild Wild Country show, that's a Netflix series if you haven't seen it. And it's about like this figure this like religious Indian guru who like comes to America, has a cult in India and comes <laughs> to America and they build yeah. like on this land and almost make their own little city and they start winning in political battles and stuff because they're like, we want to change the landscape of what we live. But like their ideals on the surface were actually very nice. Yeah. It's like to love people, to live in a community where you help each other. And it's not all about like capitalism, but like yeah. it's okay to be interested in monetary things. Like it, it was addressing that I think a way a lot of people felt where it's like, you don't have to be like, this pious like get rid of everything to feel yeah. spiritually connected to the world and i just watching it remember thinking like i don't know it's a nice idea yeah like, maybe yeah. it was executed in the wrong way and by people who I were think that's like, like why cults have such bad reps it's because like everyone ends up like dying on mass but like yeah. at the beginning you kind of the reason well, people love are fascinated because you're like i can see that yeah true some cults to me obviously start out as hate cults right and those are obviously bad when you're like this cult is built around like the hatred for different groups or but when a cult's more insular and it's like we just want to like live a beautiful life <laughs> and then they like, all die on mass it's like call oh, me like, they like did well while they did no but they don't always all die on mass. yeah no sorry but i'm saying but even sometimes if they, they do. do all and they're all like happy it's like i don't know that's <laughs> no that's different that's no it is it weird. can get dark for sure i just think my favorite takeaway from the study was like if you're more affluent you're more likely to join a call mm -hmm. well and think of really um, like all the people who are part of scientology yeah, and they also said you have to have a lot of free time. It's like rich people have free time. Because you devote it. Yeah, yeah rich people like, are well-educated yeah. and they read a lot and they're obsessed with new information. Mm -hmm. Like, it's kind of just like, woof. I like yeah. that. If, you're, if your life is otherwise occupied with just having to meet the bear, like, survive, you're probably mentally Yeah, you're like, time no, to, I don't have time for that bullshit. Yeah. Like, and, literally. And it's probably easier to see, like, that things are bullshit when you're yeah. like, okay, like, yeah. <laughs> life is hard. Totally. And I just think of, like, the rich, like, person who's just like looking for more like it's so it's I'm looking so for more can someone tell me a cult that's not bad that yeah. i can join well i'm like it doesn't like that's the cool thing about studies is they're not telling i hope like, the cult's not bad i just mean it in a way that's like a group absolutely can, canceled yeah, yeah no exactly i'm just worried i like are there like communities I can join? You know, I love yes. the idea. I know, I guess there are. Running I, groups. <laughs> well, actually, that's a nice idea. Right. My knee always hurts. Um, Pottery just, class. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I need something. No, something me too. Something that would feel nice. We all need a cult. No. No, we all need. annoying rich a community. need a cult. No, you but, know what though because no. we also work alone and at home and like uh, obviously we have friends and i'm just saying like it's so easy in this job to feel really isolated careful what you're canceled oh oh my god please do not canceled. post a clip of this no it's not hard i'm just saying it's isolating so we're done like that's all the sign there's not that much scientific information about cults if you happen to think you're in a call reach out yeah let us know. we'll chat with you we might be like where is it can we come <laughs> um and then I just, my last thing was just like, what is the influencer thing? It's like some girl said being an influencer is hard. Yeah. Is being she, an influencer a cult? No. no, because I don't think it's like centralized. I mean, I think like money is a cult and fame is a cult. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If, yeah. you, if you could call them that because people become obsessed and spend all And Hollywood's life. kind of a cult because it's like people try so hard to like get into like And there are the people Emmys. of power <laughs> that you have to appease. Yeah. And oh. it's a very political insider game in a lot of cases. And we've seen them like the guy with the corner office who's a freak. Yeah. Literally, I can name three of them. Of freaks. And they're... Cult leaders. They're cult leaders because they're so bad at their job. Like their job is to be like when sociable, their job? And, sociable they're <laughs> and they're not. They're like scary. Um, so wait, the influencer said online was that it was hard. Who, well, yeah, I guess it was from a video. I don't know. It was from a YouTube video or something. And she was just like, try being an influencer for whatever. Like it's so hard. And obviously it's like blown up and it is like, it's why I love it. Like thinking about a lot of people the, are like, all, it's not hard. I love thinking of all the influencers who are like my opportunity for clicks. And they're like, yeah, being an influencer is actually so easy. Yeah. I know. And it's like, but I bet like in the back of their head, they're like, it is hard. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone We've deals lived, with their own 
job like is every job has challenges and every life has challenges and uh, some are probably quantifiably much harder than others but no matter what when you're in your own bubble it's all you know but we've lived like we've been doing this for long enough that we lived through a time where like it was cool for youtubers to be like lifetime oh true yeah <laughs> like they would mm-hmm. get their clicks by saying they were burnt and now out. enough people do that it's like it's, it's not. like it's not <laughs> it's like but i just remember always being like shut up yeah. and then also sometimes they'd be like i'm going on a hiatus and then they'd make a video like two weeks later and i'd be yeah. like wait that's not a hiatus it's like we regularly do that and we're not taking a break <laughs> yeah anyways um, that was me trying to get my little hits in with the I'm an influencer. Yeah, the and end of an hour long podcast. <laughs> okay. Um, namaste. Yeah, we're gonna actually we'll we'll start a cart. What? Let's start. Let's start a cult. You and I, Mitch. I'm so I'm not gonna be able to do that. I don't. I'm not. You can do that. I, I just have you are you would be. A I good just have to become leader. a celebrity, and then you'll finally be interested in me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you you would be a good. I would not. No, I don't think I'd be a leader. I think I have to be a follower. I don't have the energy to be a leader. I don't have the energy to be a leader. Honestly, leaders are insufferable. Yeah, and I just want to like sit down and like hang out. I don't chill. want the stress. You're right. Like if, if someone was like, your order. job is to like Lead collect this wheat all day, I'd be like, okay, I'll do that. Yeah. Give me something simple. But then I would probably get bored. Okay, let's I'd want to collect go. wheat and then at night I'd have to like be on like a drum and like I'd have to sing a bit. <laughs> or dance. I could be a dance no what? I could a dance call. At my camp which was a cult i was usually thrown into quote unquote gay things to do which i was not that good at but the dance instructor thing which again i had no experience with but they were like you're gay you can do it absolutely loved i would be a dance instructor at a cult in a second but people might slowly be like he doesn't know how to dance and that was (laughs) all righty well thank you for listening as always and we'll see y'all next week bob peace